<laughs> Robert England here, a.k.a. Freddy Krueger. This is Burning for Springwood. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Burning for Springwood, a Freddy's Nightmares retrospective. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. With you today is Mike. Yes, I'm here. What's up? He's so excited. Time to already. get back to some Freddy's Nightmares. Can you hear it in his voice? He's so excited to be here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Suzanne is here. How are you, Sue? Oh, I'm, I'm hanging in there. I'm. Really, I'm, it's only been uh, two days since everything's been closed, and I've already got cabin fever. This is not going to bode well. See, this is when an introvert, be, being an introvert, comes in handy because you know I don't give a fuck about social situations. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's here. We're here, and we have guests that want to watch the trash with us. And uh, from the Friday Nightmares podcast, brand new podcast, we have Heather and Scott. How you guys doing? What's going on, Gary? Not much. Yeah, thanks for having us on. W- welcome to the boiler room and all that good stuff. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> well, tonight we are going to cover episode 15 and 16 of the very first season of this wonderful television program, and we'll start right away with episode 15 called "School Days." Stephen's not doing well at Springwood High. F. As in failure. He can't quite seem to fit in. We're going to have to take some drastic action. And he's about to learn a lesson he'll never forget. He'll never get away with this. I'm going to report you to the school board. Read and write when arithmetic Freddy style. Spare the blade. Spoil the child. On the next Nightmare on Elm Street, the series Freddy's Nightmares. Ah, uh, this premiered on February 11th, 1989. And your cheapo plot synopsis is this. Steve Dart is a student at Springwood High School, decides to take it easy to escape stress. When he is called to the principal's office, he starts having nightmares and soon discovers this high school's shocking secret. Yeah. In the second half, Matt is a young Springwood High School student whose SATs are coming up. He he begins to have strange nightmares and illusions of his life if he fails his SATs. He kind of turns his life around in the second half. But whatever. I'm going to defer to one of our guests first and ask Heather what she thought of School Days. I loved it. I thought it was great. I, I, you know, it's 1989. My expectations are low. Um, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the SAT thing. Now that's a thing for you guys in the States. We don't have that in Canada. Um, you just get your, you just, your, your, led into school about your final year of high school, the average of that. So I think SATs are bullshit anyway. Um, so I kind of really liked how the, it was kind of like at the end of it, how he got a separate dream <laughs> of his come true. And I thought that the um, in the first story, I thought that young man was uh, – I dug him. I dug what was going on at the school, and I dug the outcome of it. To be honest with you, I had a lot of fun with the episode. Cool. Scott? Well, this one uh... – yeah, I thought it was okay. I I enjoyed the first uh, one, but the SATs one, I I really couldn't get into that one that much. But yeah, all in all, I thought it was uh, like the main character in the first story. I, I enjoyed his uh, performance and like the story element of that one. I'm, I'll say I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit later. But yeah, I, that that one reminded me of a couple of different movies, which I really enjoyed. But yeah, and all in all, I thought this episode was okay. Cool. Kick it to Suzanne. You know, I actually like this one better than a lot of them. And for once, the two parts seemed fairly seamless. I did really like the first part. He has this horrible nightmare, and they're turning everyone into robots, so they'll be good students. And, yeah, I kind of remember that that whole conveyor belt thing at high school and how, you know, it you had your outcasts and the one person who is the class clown, which is what I think this dude was. Well, they they, they, yeah. stole, they stole it from Pink Floyd's what they did, which is fine. Yeah, they did. Yeah, but, uh... 
And I even thought that the effects were pretty good in the first half of this one, too. I mean, the robot arms, they, they did not look terrible for the time. And I remember I, I remember people going insane over the SATs, so I can understand the second one. I just thought it was hilarious when they were, they were having dinner and asking – he was – I don't know if he was dreaming and they were asking him all these questions and then they laid out in a pattern on the floor. So he had, was supposed to try to solve it. But yeah, it was, it was a fairly, it was a, it was a fun episode. It wasn't super spectacular, but you know what? It, this one for the time period, and I was in high school in this time period. So yeah, I, this one actually made quite a bit of sense to me. Cool. Mike. Yeah, I think this is one of the better episodes of the series so far. I think uh, it was a good play on kind of the anxiety uh, of um, the transition from high school, trying to get into college. They played that up well with the whole SAT thing. I thought the first half was almost kind of mimicked like a a Stepford Wives type thing, except it was a Stepford everything or Stepford students because <laughs> where where it kind of goes there. I like uh, – the supposed dark secret that was revealed about the high school. And uh, I thought this was one of the better transitions from first half to second half of the episode. It it was a pretty smooth transition, which is, you know, from us doing the show so far, we've found that many times it isn't. (laughs) But yeah, overall, I, I thought this one was good. And, you know, his killer 80s mullet was uh, a fantastic. Oh, that was epic. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm trying to think of the 80s. Um, was it Tears for Fears? It reminded me of that look with the, the black duster. Oh, the, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was damn near everything in the 80s. He had that Rick Astley jacket on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I picture it now. It's funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, this one for me. It was fine. Yeah, you know, I, I think this kid had a real narcolepsy problem because he just was sleeping through like the whole episode. And, uh, right. <laughs> it, could, it could have been a whole dream or just like him in one night. You, you never know what this in these this series, but yeah, you know, the whole thing with him falling asleep in the principal's office. I mean, I've, I've never done this before or anything like that. But um, <laughs> all that weird, crazy stuff that, that I guess was all motivated for him to turn his life around. Which you know the whole. The whole second part of the episode, he's wearing a different wardrobe, and he's more scholastically motivated until the anxiety of the standardized test comes through, which, you know, is a big problem here in the States. If you're a teacher, you know, my, my friend Rico is a teacher, and he had this all these aspirations of he's going to be, like, doing his own thing, yada, 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 just to get there and say, no, only standardized tests really matter. It really doesn't matter what you teach him as long as you stick to the curriculum, so they pass these tests, and you know it's it's a big it's a big thing, and I think a big problem here in the states. I don't want to. Get I think it's it. a huge problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think standardized yeah. testing is, is over and over again proved as as in as inadequate to assess someone's intelligence. Ineffective, okay. yeah. Yeah, this is you know 1989. I actually really liked in the first episode when um, the principal saying, "We want you to be unique, but you need to follow rules. You need to. You, we don't want you to rebel, but we want you to." Like, we want you to be your own self, but we want you to follow rules. I thought that was a really interesting monologue. And, like, I was six in 1989, so I don't know, you know, much about that time period. But I wondered if that had anything to do with, like, I don't know, maybe there was, like, some kind of rebel shit going on in the 80s that I'm not aware of. But I thought that was interesting that he was saying all of that. And then, of course, it followed up later with the robots and, and shit. But I thought there was some really interesting dialogue in this, to be honest with you. Like, maybe because I work in the education system, so, like, it spoke to me a little bit more. But, yeah, it was, um, like, the the whole 80s ash, like, 80s vibe of it, but also just some of the lines. They were kind of... I thought it was well-written. I thought it was actually a really good, well-written episode. I mean, with, with everything now, you know, with social media and all stuff, we're, we're even more sheep now than we were back in 89, I'm sure. Just uh, yeah. yeah. Right, and the, and the pressure to succeed. Like, that kid having that anxiety, like, that's not far off. I help kids prep for, like, vet school and to get into medical school. Like, that shit's not far off of probably what they're feeling. And, like, I just thought they captured it really well. Like, Bruce Suzanne, like, when they're on the floor doing that, like, 
math equation. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. Like I, I just loved it, and and how like every scene at the dinner table would turn into and what I assume was an SAT question. I thought that was really really smart writing. Yeah, yeah, it worked, it worked real well. I mean, the second half worked better than the first half for me because the first half was you know the kind of silly that you come to expect from this show, but the the, the second half. Seems like there were actual real stakes there. Until you get to the end of the episode, it's kind of like all happy go lucky. Hey, by the way, remember that when you want to be a music artist? Here's a free contract for you. And then like, <laughs> it's like, it's like nothing bad happens to this kid. I don't want nothing bad to happen to him. But it, it, at the end of the day, this is Freddy's <laughs> nightmares. Yeah, you want him to get slapped around just a little bit. It was both happy endings, and that kind of surprised me. I'm like, why are both of these endings, like, kind of fine? Like, really yeah, I know, and like I said, these, these kids. <laughs> the writer and the directors did very little. I mean, one of them did, like, some TV stuff, but the other day I couldn't even find anything on IMDb about him. Mm. Boy, oh boy. But I found that this one, I had a hard time. I think this is the one where... Freddie's monologue I couldn't really hear him and he seemed like he was in the background and it was very like not filmed well like I wasn't sure if yeah maybe, I like it was that, just, the, sound, the, the sound design was way off through the whole episode which is a big problem because the, the music sometimes is a lot louder than dialogue is and I don't think it was the version that we watched which is on Daily Motion which is a really an SD copy of the episode which really really they're really good, good good copies of episodes but Whoever did the sound design of this episode made it very difficult to watch in parts because of that reason. Yeah, I had a hard time like paying attention to some of the dialogue at certain points for sure. Yeah, um, they're, I know they're probably definitely VHS rips, which is not great for the sound quality. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, to, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, but yeah, I, uh, the one thing I like, like I. One of the movies that the first one reminded me of, like uh, Mike did say one of them, which was Stepford Wives. It also reminded me of Disturbing Behavior. Yeah. You guys seen that? Yeah. Just the yeah. whole school mm-hmm. conformity. And I think that's kind of why I liked it, because it's like a story that I was familiar with. And like, yeah, I just had fun with it. Um, but yeah, like after hearing you guys talk about the SAT stuff, like maybe I was just too much of a high on back in high school because I don't remember even taking my SATs. <laughs> So, like, I don't remember uh, any of the yeah. stress or anxiety. I mean, when I I went to high school in the mid late nineties, and it was kind of like most of the people by then taking the SATs were specifically ones trying to get like into like the four year colleges on scholarships or something. It's like something to add to their portfolio, but it didn't it didn't seem like a high pressure thing by then or i think people were kind of like it's not really needed anymore unless except for like certain situations and now i have no idea because it's been so damn long since i've been in high school <laughs> right yeah because i just because I, I remember i took the sats but i don't remember anything about them like I, i'm sure i was high throughout the whole entire time taking the test but like yeah i didn't yeah, i just remember that just staring at the fucking clock and there, I know there were a few people there that were sweating bullets, but once again, you're right. It was more aimed at people that were trying to get into a higher level of a four-year university. Me, I'm like, fuck it, whatever. That yep. <laughs> was pretty that was much me. my attitude. Fuck it, whatever. And it co- we- it- Sorry, go ahead, Suzanne. Oh, no, and I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it cost like 60 bucks when I was in high school to take it. Oh. Yeah, they made you pay to take that exam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And then there's SAT Welcome prep, to America, there's all Heather. kinds of stuff, you know. And <laughs> yeah, I bought a book. <laughs> that was it. And I yeah, think I, like, it. skimmed it, and I'm like, <laughs> literally, my whole stance, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, I was like, wasn't there also ACTs as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I can't remember which one of those I took, but I only took one of them, and yeah, I, I don't remember shit about them. <laughs> so it was a waste of my parents' money either way. <laughs> I liked the uh, relationship between the guy and his girlfriend in the second one on how she's like, no, no, we're going to both go to college, and we're going to get good jobs, and we're going to be dinks, dual income, no kids. I thought that was an interesting like throw in on how she was planning his life and shit. And <laughs> that's like a big temper tantrum at the end because oh, he doesn't yeah. think he's taking it seriously. And then some hot babe jumps out of a car and takes him off to be a rock star. I thought that was, I thought that was pretty. Oh, yeah, I, was like, ah, ah. 
<laughs> it's like there was one scene in that, and I'm like, okay, so if this dude's your boyfriend, what are you hanging out with this douche nozzle in the car for? <laughs> right? That girl right? dropped him like four times, like, like did this whole episode. She drops him, you know, when she doesn't, especially... So I'm gonna take the test seriously. I'm gonna go walk away, and then she she gets in the uh, what a you know, the douche nozzle, and there's something towards the beginning there. I forget, but it, it's oh yeah, she God. was just a bitch. <laughs> she was yeah. a straight up bitch. Yeah, Not the I don't lady know why I he was chasing her. No, I, I don't know why he was chasing her. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and then he kept like waking up, and the guy in the first one, I thought he was daydreaming. By the What's way, this? I didn't know he was sleeping. Like the guy mm-hmm. in the first story, I thought he was daydreaming. No, this is the and same he, guy, this... isn't it? No, it's yeah, a different no, guy. He, no, they're different. Yeah, I went back yeah. to check because I thought they were the same at first too. And oh, nope, this this, this uh, no, is it's friend, one of those guys. friends in that yes. in the shop class. This is the tertiary character that you see for five seconds that they make a whole second part of the episode about. Yes, yes. You know, how, can, how can I be so stupid? You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, they do this. They do this often, by the way. You know, it's a little more obvious in the next episode, but. Um, by the way, Scott, if you like disturbing behavior, if you haven't seen Dead Kids or it's oh it's, yeah, Dead Kids is awesome. Strange oh, behavior, probably. it's known as. I will have to look this one up. There's a magical scene where white kids are dancing at a party to Palisades Park and dancing. Yeah, that just yeah, that just makes my my heart just little just do little flutters. It's oh, yeah. such I'm, I'm awesome sold already. Movie. Yes. Uh oh. I, while I'm watching this, uh, the first the second part. I wanted to watch how how I went, how I got into college real bad the Savage Steve Holland movie, and then I started to think about Laura Flynn Boyle a lot because she was really pretty back in those days and yeah, <laughs> sexy <laughs> thoughts, sexy thoughts, y'all, you know, sexy thoughts. Oh yeah, the I'll seven degrees of, of uh, Gary Hill. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. he, th- that's a thing. <laughs> um, I'll kick it back to Heather again and ask her anything else she liked about the episode, and I will explain our rating system to her. Oh, I I liked it. I I will probably rate it high. I started binge watching them after I watched these episodes. So the only thing I noticed is that they got. I'm sure you guys have done other episodes leading up to this, but like on rewatches on some of them because I saw like a couple a long time ago. But man, like budget really dropped. That's the only thing I can say. But I liked it. I don't know how's your rating work, Gary. What do you um, want me to say? The best uh, of, of the of the bunch get the fuck the prime time, bitch. Uh, the, the the middle ones we keep it in the boiler room, and then the last one, the lowest of the low, we we've been debating to have another rating because we watched a really bad one last episode, as the flaming piss resurrection. So what do you what do you okay. give this? Okay, yeah. I oh mm, I guess oh man, <sighs> almost a prime time bitch one. Like, is there like on the verge of that? No. No. Okay, yeah. then I'm gonna go to the one down to it. What's the one down again? Keep, keep it in the boiler. Keep it in the boiler. Keep it in the boiler for the win. Okay. <laughs> Scott, what about you, sir? Anything else? What do you rate it? Um. Yeah, I'll say I. I thought this episode was for because I've only watched I think the very first episode of season one like many many years ago, so I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, but uh. Yeah, I think this was still fun. Like, it, I I thought it was okay, but it was still entertaining, and I will definitely rewatch it at some point. And like Heather, I am definitely going to be watching this series. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much else to say about this episode, so I would say yeah, keep it in the boiler room. Cool, Suzanne. You know, like I said, for, for, you know, on the rare occasion where the two acts work so well together. It, this was a, one of the better episodes, so I'm actually going to step it up and go prime time. Okay. Mike? Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm overrated a little only because well, the three of us have every other episode to compare to. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed this a lot. Like I said, I think the transition between the two halves of the episode went really well. I like the way they used uh, the anxiety um aspects of it it made for an effective story for me and uh uh, you know i thought the acting wasn't as nearly as bad as we've seen in some other episodes so i'm gonna go ahead and give this a welcome to prime yeah i'm gonna keep it in the boiler i mean i i dug it there's some you know i love wacky stuff these episodes guys and there's some far out stuff in the first half and more i guess real stakes in the second half with a little bit of wackiness in there, but uh, the last episode we talked, we talked about a girl who who hit her head, who who, who broke her crown and became a baby all of a sudden. So uh, 
wacky, <laughs> wow. wacky, wacky, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you guys have been listening, you can go back and listen to the first seven episodes of this. Uh, they're, they're, we watch them so you don't have to. So <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna keep it in the boiler though. It's it's good. It's it's fair. It's fair to watch, and you know, there's a lot worse of these out there that we haven't gotten to yet. I'm sure. But uh, our next episode in line here is uh, called Cabin Fever. Carl's flying high in the friendly skies. Welcome to the Five Mile High Club, Carl. But this flight has no return. We missed one. Look, you've got the wrong man. Has he bought a one-way ticket to an early grave? Prepare for departure. Carl Ash Jr. is going to be sorry. He ever flew to Jeffy Sky. On the next Freddy's Nightmares. Uh, this is directed by the man himself, Robert Englund who gave us that, that luscious promo you guys hear every time as this show happens. And, um, premiere February 18, 1989. Uh, your cheaper plot synopsis is this. An airline air. Who, who writes this shit? Discovers he's on a flight <laughs> to hell. <laughs> Second part is a flight attendant thinks she has found Mr. Wright. Yeah. Sauced at a bar. It's always a bad mistake, <laughs> you know. I don't know who the dude is, but, um, <laughs> Leslie Dean, I, I guess... She's like fresh off a of 976 Evil here because he directed her in that movie and later comes back in, in Freddy's Dead and I think like some other thing that I've saw, seen, I don't know, but she uh, she plays the flight attendant to uh, our, our 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 titular douchebag in the first, first, first part of this episode. But I'm going to kick it to you, Mike, first and ask him what he thought about Cabin Fever. Uh, well, uh, I thought the first half of this was okay. I mean, I like the premise. I think um, an airplane is a good setting um, for horror just because uh, you get what the title is called. You get that cabin fever possibly. The fact that you're boxed into a small area can uh, intensify those feelings. Um, I like – didn't this – the second half, was it – was the character one of the flight attendants from the first half? Yeah, she, she, yeah. That's yeah. The one that okay, was, uh, yeah. That's kind of sweet on him, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, so this is another one where, you know, the tr- I, I guess the transition of this one was decent too. I mean, they, they at least took a character that was somewhat prominently featured in the first half. Um, I didn't think this one was as strong as episode 15, but I didn't hate it. Um, but uh, I don't know. I want to hear what everyone else has to say before I get into more details. Okay. I'll kick it to Scott then. All right. So, yep. Out of these two, this is my uh, favorite. Um, I enjoyed the play of the anxiety and fear of flying that the air had. And there was some level of creepiness to especially it's like because I don't know like if the little girls from – the Nightmare on Elm Street series, or yeah, the series come back in the TV series or not like this, but that was nice to see them pop up and like enduring his like little drug fueled nightmare dream. And I thought they played some creepy elements to that. And I, yeah, I thought it played well on like the anxiety and fear of uh, flying. And then, yeah, I like the, I enjoyed the second half as well. Like uh, not nearly as much as the first one, but I did like the whole basically, uh, hunting her for sport, if you will. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode. Cool. Suzanne? You know, I, I this one had moments that were hits for me and moments that were straight up misses. I, I dig it. I'm a terrible flyer. I am, I am a nervous wreck on an airplane because I, I was sitting having a drink before I had to fly, and this guy was actually trying to explain, well, you know, planes are usually cr- you know, crash. They just kind of glide. I'm like, this is not the conversation to be having with me right now. It's like, it's like the man says, you take your shoes and your socks off, and you put your your toes, you make fists right? with your toes. You know, come on, man. Yep, it's a way to keep you calm. <laughs> oh, I, I, and, you know, the, the guy that was in it, Brett Cullen, I think his name was, he was in a bunch of, like, B-bad comedies in the 80s. So I have kind of recognized him. But, you know, I liked the whole, you know, his father died and he, these people are coming back from, I guess, these flawed air, airplane parts thing that cause crashes. 
And he's basically there to kind of dip into a little bit of the sins of the father. And he just couldn't take it. So, yeah, that part, you know, was the, the first part of it was entertaining. I did like it. I understand the whole anxiety. But I just, you know, the second part was just so formulaic. It got, really was. It's kind of tossed in a bit. Yeah, it's just a. I liked it. I'm going I'm, I'm to agree with you. Uh, kick the last one, Heather. Well, I love. I wasn't was done. Oh, done. Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Suzanne. Go Get continue. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. She knows this. <laughs> oh, I know. But, you know, this one was just, like I said, everything about it was formulaic. She's, you know, of course, fallen down drunk, goes home with this dude. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this dude is, he's a serial killer. He's got to be. There's no other explanation. Mm-hmm. And boom, mm-hmm. there it is. And then, you know, she runs away and then. You've got your backwoods moonshiners who, of course, are going to kill her and take her back to her. At least I take her that. back to them. And I'm like, oh my god, seriously, you had to throw hillbilly moonshiners in too? At least he's holding that, at least he's holding that jug properly. Come on now. It's a... Right? <laughs> I know, but I mean, damn, he was like pouring profit down her throat. Come on. But I just, this was, I did not, this one just felt once again, completely disjointed to me. Even though she was a more predominant feature in the first half, I just didn't, it, it just, they were just so completely different that I just didn't, it was just kind of like a speed bump for me. But yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say for right now. Okay. Now, Heather. <laughs> I uh, I liked how it was called Cabin Fever because Cabin being in the plane and then Cabin like where the dude was living and he took her to. I thought that was a cute little play on words. I like the first story better because it had a clear conclusion. I'm still not sure what happened to the chick. In yeah, the I know. It just really, <laughs> the ending just was kind of a big blur. And then it's like, wait, what just happened? And like, you know, it kind of went from like he had people to it looked like he was just drawing on mannequins in his back room. So that I didn't. so I, true. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't quite. I didn't quite get that guy, but I liked the uh, the plane part, and I liked how all the ghosts came back that had died in the planes that had been shitty made, and um, basically he had to sit there and kind of listen to their stories and then be all super creepy and stuff. I really liked that one, um, and I didn't mind the beginning of the first one. Like I thought that the story was, you know, pretty basic bitch for lack of a better word. Like. You know, drunk chick at a bar goes home with a dude, ends up being creepy, runs into the hunters, and I was really digging them hunters. I thought they were some Me too. nice, like hills have eyes, like wrong turn shit going on. Um, but they had too many teeth for that, though. Yeah, that's true. They could have lost some teeth, but they seem pretty. And then let him be a guy giving her shit in the truck. Like, I know your type. You just leave men all the time. <laughs> I thought some of the dialogue was funny. First right? thing he says there is to cover yourself up. You know, right? and he's berating her like it was so ridiculous. But um, I I didn't I didn't get the ending of that one because I didn't get the fuck what happened. So I really liked the first one, and the second one just kind of like it just ended on a confusing note for me. So it wasn't my my preference. Girl with your breasts all hanging out of that shirt, goddamn whore! You know, if their breasts weren't hanging out, she had like a tank top <laughs> on more or less. But you know, I guess that was hanging out for that time. For TV, I think she did go topless and something. I don't think her breasts are that big. I'm just going to throw it out there. She has some falsies <laughs> in there. Or something. <laughs> Put push up bra or something. I don't know. Here I go again, pervert again, the girl. But uh, <laughs> we wouldn't have it any other way, Gary. Damn. Why not? She was pretty drunk at that bar, and she was. <laughs> I was fucking lit, and then I did like how they flashed the Freddy Bean in the bar. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I, I did I can, like his bar fly joke. Yeah. yeah, like that was like he was a better character in that one. Like you could hear him better, but definitely the first story. And like I almost kind of felt bad for the guy when he like fell asleep at the end and didn't wake up or OD'd on sleeping pills and alcohol, which made sense because yeah. that's what he was fucking chugging back the entire time. Yeah, I, 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 was gonna, from... I was gonna say like I, I was really impressed with that kind of dark ending. Yeah, I thought he was gonna wake up. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> he was not waking up. Nope. So you know, and and I don't know. I think they're. I, I feel like 
that was where like Robert England put his efforts in, and then the last one he just fell asleep in the last part of the direction. <laughs> yeah. I know fucking scene because like, it just didn't. You know what, guys? Switch and then switch again and then switch again. You know because. <laughs> I, I'll say one thing about this episode. Robert Evans is really good at directing himself because yeah. the, 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 the the little little cutscenes of this one were pretty top notch. I mean, you kind of you kind of kind of pretty on the what, plane, yeah. Yeah, well, you got into it that he was going to be the gremlin on the side of the plane. Yeah, know? he went he went creep keeper in this episode. Yeah. He totally did. I so loved that's, it. That's good. I love the little nod to the Twilight Zone episode, though. That it's just good. kind of made me happy. It's kind of funny. But um, yeah, the the first part is real fine. I, I like that they established you know who he was. That he was the, the the son of this big CEO of this airline, who who died. His father died. They showed it you know, in, in an article. You know, it, it, you know, and um, obviously it was controversial because he was being very nervous on the plane. You know, and he knew that his father was up into some dirty stuff. But you know, when he's gonna see the ghosts, you know, all three of them. Which you know, I'd imagine if, if a plane crashed, there was more than three people on the thing. Well, um, except for right now, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> I loved, I loved the um, the promotional video they made for this. You know, um, the, the the thing where you know the well, welcome to something something airways, <laughs> and we you'll you'll be in the fl- you'll be in the air fifteen minutes before you reach your, your next departure, or she says, or something like that, and the old lady pops up on the screen. It's like, oh, oh yeah. this is our first flight ever, or some shit like that. I forget what she says, but the old folks are adorable. When they come on this plane, they're like, this looks just like the last plane we were on, honey, or some shit like that. <laughs> oh, my God. It was too funny. I really like, and the little girl talking about, like, I'm going to crash and die, and it doesn't really matter. Because I don't have any memories after this. Yeah. <laughs> she was, it was laying. It was fucking I miss Christmas. Yeah, she was laying yeah. on thick, that little girl. Right? She was. Oh, my God. Yeah, she was. Like, it was like all the ghosts of Christmas past, present came to, like, shit on this dude. And, like, <laughs> For the fucking planes that have been created, and I like the scene with him and his dad at the end, oh, where it's kind of yeah. like I thought that was good. It's like no cabin looks like this, but I, I, it, just, it worked for this episode. Yeah, and, and um, it's like when he when he say something about it's okay, son, it's on autopilot, ah, yeah, or some shit like that. <laughs> Look at all strung out and shit. I love it. It's so amazing. Um, but like you guys said, the second half is this this whole thing with the. The stewardess, who was played by Leslie Dean, who was supposedly his girlfriend, as they they say in this bar, but they really weren't together. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't care at this point. I guess she was heartbroken. And she was drinking her sorrows away. Drinking her, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's her first time drinking. Is all of this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's really she's really putting them them margaritas away way beyond last call. And of course, you know, some dude sees her as as a weaker as a weaker being in the, in the bar. Takes her home to his isolated log cabin, which it should be. He starts going on about his ex. He's like, I had a, I had a wife. Her name was Betty. She was a stewardess too. And yeah, you should big, big red flag right there because when she got in there, she seemed like she was pretty, like she was sobering up in a way, like she was aware of her surroundings, but she still wanted to fuck. So she was, uh, she was willing to, to get it in with this guy. And I don't think they ever did fuck either, which is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So they get the wacky stuff where she, she she finds the body in the freezer and the secret compartment in the cabin where she finds other bodies and all this is very funny to me. So I, I had I had a good time with both parts actually, I'm not gonna lie to you. But um the idea of this guy it switching back and forth and then the hillbillies being involved in his long con with these women and it it just made it all the the ending he got just made it it made it dumb, the ending he got. And um I'm gonna, what actually happened? I, I, I swear. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of left that just hanging, and you're just having to guess, guess figure it out on your own, <laughs> which apparently we cannot. So, uh, Robert, you, you didn't write this episode, but you, you directed Psychopaths uh, very majestically, and I appreciate that for this episode. And uh, I'm going to kick it back to Heather and ask her anything else she'd like to say about this episode, and what did she give it for rating? Well, I didn't know that Robert Englund directed it, and I love everything he does, so I'll try not to let that influence <laughs> my decision. Um, I'm going to give it the um, boiler room. What is it? Boiler room? Down in the boiler room? Keep it in the, Keep boiler. It in the boiler room? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm going to get a keep it in the boiler room because I really like the first one and I liked the first half of the second story. It was only the ending that kind of lost it for me, but I was entertained throughout. Cool. Scott? Uh, yeah, well, one thing we did not mention, I did love that guy's uh, collection of the airplane bottle of alcohol that he had on a freaking stepladder. Oh, yeah. So I, I freaking love that. <laughs> And what did he say? It was like a kink of his or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Like I fucking love bottles. that. It's kind of like kink of mine. Then edible, like edible underwear or some shit. Like he yeah. says. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, it's just like edible underwear and people that like feet. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love Again, that line. Red flags all over the place with this asshole. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had a lot of fun with this episode. Um, Especially the very first uh, first half, and then yeah, the second half was just kind of like, like Suzanne said, it was very formulaic, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, the ending I wish would have been a little more clarified, but all around I had a lot of fun with this one, and I would say it's, uh, I almost, I, yeah, I'm going to say welcome to primetime, bitch, for me. Cool. Ooh. Suzanne. You know, the the two parts are just so disjointed. I can't I can't give it the flaming piss resurrection, but I am going to keep it in the boiler room because it was the parts that were good were really good, and the parts that weren't good were really bad. So and yeah, yeah, it's definitely keep it in the boiler room. Mike, um, I'm going to keep it in the boiler room. <laughs> I. <laughs> I kind of agree. Like there was some good stuff in these ep- or in this episode in both halves. There's also some bad stuff. It was kind of a mix of bag of an episode, but it did enough to uh, keep it from flaming dog piss resurrection, but not quite enough to be tops. Um, so yeah, keep it in the boiler room. Man, oh man, yeah, I forgot to mention one more red flag. She either she was this drunk, or she was really really drunk. Did she fall asleep in this truck of his while going to this massive log cabin? Because it seems like really, really out there in the, in the, in the boonies, you know. <clears throat> but, um, right. She, she had to be asleep because, yeah, it just you, you don't do that. You know, like, like where are we going? An hour away from the bar, and like, yeah. <laughs> you take it to a good Wait. old, you take it to a good old no till motel, and yeah, you get your business done, you know. <laughs> unless, unless, of course, you you intend to kill her, and this in this kind of case, right, yeah. He intends to kill her. He needs the isolation. But again, big big red flags all over. So if you're if you're Leslie Dean in a situation and start do some stuff about fucking edible underwear and, and feet and takes you out to the fancy <laughs> log cabins for something dead wife and many, many red flags, just just don't do it, honey. Just just keep keep on keep on trucking. Get the fuck out of there, you know. Keep on trucking. Yes. <laughs> Famous words from Gary. Keep on trucking. I didn't I didn't invent that phrase, but you're welcome, Heather, you know. It's just uh, <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to keep it in the boiler room, too. It's good enough. I mean, I, I recommend watching it. Um, maybe over the last one, I think, for, for me. Because I had... Nice. Had, uh, this is my kind of wacky in this episode. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's, that's about it for this one, man. And I'm going to kick it to Heather and or Scott to pimp their, their wares and tell us where you can find them. Uh, do you want to do this one, Heather, or shall we? No, I? you go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, we uh, we are the Friday Nightmares podcast. Uh, we've been doing monthly shows, but uh, due to everything that's been going on in the world, we're going to just be going kind of bi-weekly for a little while, just because <laughs> why the hell not? We have extra time. We got um, nothing else to do, let's be real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we uh, actually just released our third episode, which was uh, Eco Horror and... Uh, like kind of looking into natural creature features, and that that one was a lot of fun. Uh, had a blast recording it, and blast kind of uh, doing a lot of research for that one. Uh, but yeah, you can find our show. We're uh, under the Kill the Cast banner, uh, which can be found on Legion Podcasts, Spotify, and Podbean. So yeah, just subscribe to Kill the Cast, and you'll see the Friday Nightmares pop up whenever we release a new episode. Cool, Mike. <laughs> Fresh Cuts, No More Room in Hell. Uh, that's currently what I got going on. I've been on 22 Shots recently doing the Scream franchise retrospective. Uh, next episode of Fresh Cuts is going to be on The Hunt. 
So uh, Fresh Cuts is about to get kind of interesting because theaters are shutting down. Movies are getting delayed. Everything everything that they've announced that they're going to put out on VOD, is, as far as horror goes, is stuff we either already did Fresh Cuts on or stuff we have already seen. So it looks like for the time being, we're going to be looking to uh, VOD until – this whole thing calms down enough to where they start opening theaters again because we had a quiet place to coming up, but not anymore. Suzanne. Uh, NFW doing a bunch of snake movies just wrapped on Anaconda. So that's always a fun movie. And you can look for that on Horophilia. Cool. So the podcast, the uh, next one that you should hear um, probably released the same week as this episode should be our Burnt Offerings and Amityville Horror episode uh, Yay. featuring nice. a full crew plus two guests so it's going to be a long show I'm going to be super exhausted for work but it's going to be so fucking worth it um, yeah Nudie's coming on and my, my boy uh, Cameron Scott's coming on so I'm looking forward to hearing their opinions and me just holding my breath a lot while, while Suzanne, Iris, and Jamie just wax poetic on books they read about this and, you know, different things. <laughs> and it's going to be a very informative episode, I have a feeling, and I, I'm i not going to be disappointed, neither should you. Uh, two Drink Minimums are coming. I have to release the Grease 2 episode and the Desperado episode still. I You probably hear the Grease 2 one before this comes out, because I'm probably going to release it tomorrow as we're recording this. Uh, very fun episode. It's always fun to hear people talk about films that you don't really want to watch. That's why the Pink Flamingos episode was so wonderful. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I still herald that as one of our best episodes ever, the Pink Flamingos one. Because Nudie was just oh, distraught with disgust and wanting to turn it off. And man, it was a... Uh... Oh, it's great. <laughs> um, yeah, those are coming out. This is coming out. You can find this show, uh, Party for Springwood, on the Cinnabee feed and Two Drink on uh, its normal feed and all the shows on the regular Legion feed. So Legion it up. Uh, next two episodes sound like some real winners. Uh, <laughs> like a two-parter. But Love Stinks, which is uh, is an episode that features Tamara Glenn, who was um, the, the girl in the devil costume from, from Halloween 5. Uh, pretty foxy girl, and Jeffrey Combs in the second part of that episode. <laughs> oh, sure, nice. I'm not sure who's in the, the next one, but um, it's called The Art of Death. It's directed by Ken Wiederhorn, who gave us um, Return of the Living Dead Part 2, and it's directed by our, our wonderful Michael DeLuca, who did a majority of the stuff on this show, and Ken Wiederhorn. But this uh, synopsis of the episode is a young artist comic is brought to life. Uh, of course, the second part of this episode which is supposed to be fit, uh, when you fit into the next episode. <laughs> a claustrophobic <laughs> woman is tormented by her roommate's friend. So it sounds like a fun one. We're, we're getting into that next episode, though. Yeah, um, I love how the synopsis on that one, the two parts sound nothing like they're related at all. But the, 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 the <laughs> yeah. One, yeah, that's why I didn't want to read the first one, because it just sounded too wacky. But uh, we'll get into that in the next morning for Springwood. Um, <laughs> thank you, Scott and Heather, for coming on. It was fun. Yeah, thank you for having us on. This was a blast. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be continuing watching these this series now because I'm very curious. Okay. <laughs> Go back and listen to the episodes. We, we we did seven of these so far. Well, hey, this would be number eight. So, um, yeah, that's my goal. Listen to or watch the episodes, then uh, listen to your guys' show. Cool. Yeah, we're actually approaching yeah, some... the end of season one soon. Mm-hmm. I know. There's some epic rants throughout there throughout the episodes too. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh god, I, I forgot I had my she's frigid rants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well that's it for this one. And uh thank you all for coming to the boiler room. See you next time. See you next time. See you next time.